Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are going to love this one because we're talking about tomatoes. I just picked this tomato off this plant right here and I, it was prompting me to uh, film about late season tomatoes because I realized I hadn't done a video on that before. I know a lot of you all have been commenting saying, Luke, you know, your tomatoes look so incredible. How are they still producing? I'm like, well, Oh goodness, I hope they keep producing. I mean, they just started not too long ago. And we, hey, I mean, I don't know about you, but we don't complain with as long as our tomatoes are producing, we're not complaining. So, um, so uh, what is, uh, late, you know, what is late season tomatoes and, and how do we get late season tomatoes? It's gonna be, uh, this video is gonna be titled uh, Our Guide to Late Season Tomatoes or something like that, because I think there's quite a few things they would kind of consider it a guide. Um, it's not one thing specifically that we do to getting late season tomatoes. But first, what is a late season tomato? A late season tomato is kind of what us gardeners consider tomatoes later in the season than most are getting. There's really no specific type as a late season tomato. Um, a lot of tomatoes uh, are either, well, either determinate or indeterminate. And your determinate tomatoes never can really be a, a late season tomato. Um, your indeterminates are a lot of times what can be a late season tomato because they all the determinants do is they load their fruit on and then they, they pretty much are done producing. They don't do a whole lot more, if any. Um, but the indeterminates, they continue growing all season long until the season ends. So they have an opportunity to fruit. I mean, I've even seen our tomato plants are usually fruiting, but when the first frost comes, there's usually still flowers, which is absolutely incredible. But um, yeah, so the first thing is obviously starting with an indeterminate tomato. Um, but all tomatoes can, I guess, like all indeterminates can be a late season uh, tomato. It's all in how you take care of them. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is disease prevention. If you can prevent diseases, there's about a 50% chance that you're still gonna have late season tomatoes. Um, it's the biggest chunk. I mean, if you're talking about 100% of <laughs> reasons why your tomato plant does not make it to late season, about 50% of it is, uh, is late season diseases, like late blight, which is a huge one. Uh, powdery mildew is another one. Um, things like that, that to plague gardeners like crazy and end their season short. Um, and so what we can do is obviously general care. Uh, we have done videos on the, in the past on pruning, but one of the things that we do is we always make sure to come in and prune up the tomato plant, even if we've already pruned it for the main growing season. If we're going for late tomatoes and we see there's still a lot of production left in our tomato plants, we'll keep pruning them up, we'll keep taking care of them, um, because what you wanna do is you wanna keep those lower leaves pruned. Those lower leaves are the older leaves and the older leaves are the weaker leaves that typically will get stressed and diseased um, the soonest. Once your plant has disease, it's very hard to eradicate. So obviously it's always a preventative. We always are kind of uh, staying a step ahead of what that blight is doing. Um, so we'll keep, continue uh, to prune the leaves up, keep them away from the soil and even just pruning old leaves out so that there's room for new growth up at the top and, and it just kind of slows that, that the blight's progress down. Now, the next thing that we do is we are continuously preventing with uh, baking soda spray. Things like blight and powdery mildew, they need, uh, they, they need a hospitable place on your leaf to take hold. And so just as if, I mean, we treat it just as a main season tomato. We, sit, we do the exact same regimen. We do two tablespoons of baking soda to a gallon of water, a couple drops of uh, dish soap, and then a couple, uh, like one to two tablespoons of vegetable oil. We'll shake it up so, it, um, so, the, uh, so the oil and water mix, that's why you add the soap, so that the oil and water can mix, and the oil helps the baking soda solution really stick to the leaves very well. And then what we'll do is we'll spray our plants down once a week as a preventative. And that really just helps to make sure that the plant it, or the leaves are not uh, hospitable for the blights to, to take hold. Because one of the things that gardeners will encounter, or at least most gardeners will encounter, unless you're growing in like a, a place that never has winter conditions, um, which I'm very jealous of you if, you if that's the case. But for most people growing in the north at least, um, we encounter cold weather. <laughs> Shocking as it may seem when days are still in the 80s, nights 
are what you have to worry about, not the daytime temperature. I mean, today it's like 85 degrees, it's beautiful, I have nothing to worry about. But tonight, it's gonna get down to 51 degrees. 51 degrees is pretty chilly, pretty cold. And the tomato plants definitely sense that. That stress from the weather extremes, that's where your plants get sick. Um, another thing too, is, um, is obviously the, the blight takes hold better in cool and damp conditions. So, um, so by constantly keeping the plant healthier, by keeping it disease free, um, even during the cold weather, you can still find that you're able to stay one step ahead of that blight. Now the next thing that we'll do is we'll refertilize. Now we have used Trifecta Plus uh, when we first planted the plants, however, what we did about a week ago, preparing for late season tomatoes, is kind of kick them into gear again and say, no, 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 you're not done yet. Keep growing, keep producing for me because because they're in uh, because they're indeterminates, they will continue to grow all season long. But one of the things you'll find is that in a long growing season, maybe over a hundred days or so, you'll find even if you're even when you're using Trifecta, which is a all season fertilizer it still is not enough food left in the soil after all of that growing and producing that, um, that, it's, uh, you know, that it's ready to, to continue putting out more full-size fruit again. So you'll notice that the fruit tends to be a little bit smaller um, or maybe less uh, prolific, and that's just the plant kind of running out of energy. That just happens. But one thing that we can do is by refertilizing, it's gonna kick that plant back into gear, get it producing again. So we've gone back, we've refertilized around the base of the plant, just uh, about an inch away. We sprinkled Trifecta Plus around the base of all these beautiful plants here and got them going again. Now, one of the other things that we do is with our staking, you'll notice they're already outgrowing their staking. This is a big problem because having eight foot tall tomato plants which these are, is a blessing, but it's also a curse because one strong wind is all it takes to knock those babies down. So what we'll typically do is for our late season tomatoes, even though we've already st single stemmed them, we've staked them up and things like that, we will still go back and we will prune the tops. Now I hear gardeners all over the world shrieking, do not prune those beautiful tomato plants. I don't love to prune my tomato plants, especially once I've gone and single stem them. However, like this plant here, this plant here is really hanging down low. And, uh, and ouch, the biting flies are out today. Do they ever attack you? Because here in Michigan, they're really bad this time of year. Anyways, um, so you can see here that the plant, the plant is producing so much flowers up here that once it starts setting fruit, there's really not a whole lot more place to stake this onto the, onto the stem or onto the stake here. And you'll find that oftentimes your plant will break and crimp. And then there's the end of your tomatoes. So instead of uh, letting the plant kind of crimp itself and end its season short, what we'll do is we'll clip the top and that'll reroute a lot of energy. It'll form uh, suckers will have really bushy plants for about a month to month and a half that will be kind of un, unmanaged. We won't ever go back and prune any of the suckers or anything like that. We'll just let whatever fruit production happens happen and we typically can get uh, some fruit production even on those suckers that form. So uh, for instance, here's a good example. Um, so we've gone and we've gone and we've, we've already pruned the top. We've already gone and pruned the top. So it's so tall. Um, <laughs> And you can see here, here's a, this right here is a plant that is formed and it has formed some flowers there and that's on a sucker. So that means that by the time the cold season comes, if this plant is still alive, there's a very good chance that those tomatoes will be ripe and ready to harvest. So, uh, so that is another thing that we do is we will prune the tops of our tomato plants. A lot of times gardeners will say, well, I prune my tomato plants to reroute energy to ripen the fruit. That is also a very good thing that you can do if you have large tomatoes, like some of our bigger beefsteak style tomatoes. At a certain point, you're just not going to get uh, any more production out of them, regardless of, regardless of what you're, you know, regardless of what you're feeding the plant or how healthy the plant is, or you know how much you're pruning the plant. The season will come into an end, of, you know, inevitably, 
And so a lot of our beefsteak style tomatoes, those are going to be 30 to 40 days from flowering till ripening. And you're talking 30 to 40 days, if you only have 20 days left in the season, there's no sense in trying to fight the impossible. You might as well just prune them and let all the other fruit focus on maturing and ripening. So you at least have something rather than nothing. Um, and there always is fried green tomatoes as well, which you know, I, I, I don't particularly love, but I know a lot of other people do love that. So even if you do end up with green tomatoes, there's still something to do with, at least do with them. And so that's it. That is my complete guide for late season tomatoes. Grow indeterminates, single stem where you can, feed them in the fall, to get them ready to produce one last time. We'll also prune the tops when they exceed the, uh, the, the, st the uh, staking method that, of, that we have. And then we'll also, um, we'll also make sure to spray them down with baking soda once a week to make sure they stay blight free. So there's five different things that you can do to greaten your chances of getting late season tomatoes and continuing the harvest when most people don't get a harvest. I cannot recommend trying these tips enough. It is a super great way to, um, to increase your harvest, increase the amount of food that you're feeding your family, and also a really great way to, uh, to kind of stick it to the rest of the neighbors that, <laughs> that uh, they might not have access to this channel. But you know what you can do? You can give them some tips. If you see that they're already taking down their tomato plants and your tomato plants are rocking and rolling because you use these tips, say, you know, shout over the fence and say, hey, I've got something for you. And it's not my tomatoes, it's some tips to get your tomatoes next year to grow like mine. <laughs> and then maybe give them a few tomatoes as well. Anyways, I'll catch you all later. Hopefully you all enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you learned something new. And we'll see you tomorrow on another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. See ya. Bye.